Hi everyone, my name is Antonia and this is Perry Pictures. Today we are making a storyboard for an animation project using this frog character. Whether this is your first or 15th time making a storyboard, there are a lot of things to consider in order to get the most out of it, and that's what we're going to talk about here. If you've watched my beginner's animation video, this may look familiar since I shared the original storyboard from 2017 in that video. In today's video, we will be updating it for a portfolio, so let's give this old thing a fresh coat of paint. Storyboarding should tackle these five things. Tell the story, present the character's character, deliver the dialogue, set the pace or rhythm, and add camera perspective supporting the director's vision. Full disclosure, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do this video despite recording the process because I am not a professional storyboard artist and there are certainly other channels that can provide insight on the process from a more experienced standpoint. But I do believe that novice to novice shared experiences also have their place and can add valuable perspective, so that's why I decided to go ahead and share this after all. To do this, I'm using Krita because it has very textured, inky brushes that allow me to throw down a quick sketch without agonizing over the line art. When storyboarding, the concept has priority over polish, which is why I focused more on impression than illustration, so to speak. It helps to think of every panel as a thumbnail and consider how readable the idea comes across in each one. That said, I've already complicated some of these panels in the beginning by adding camera movement which is what the boxes and arrows are for that were on a screen until I hid that layer to continue my drawing. It helps to plan your animation storyboard similar to how you would plan a shot list for a live action film. Unless you're doing a cold open, the beginning of most films start with establishing shots that set up the environment your story takes place in. For this short animation, my story takes place at a pond and my characters are a duck and a frog. I've seen storyboards that are in color, but the majority seem to be in grayscale with the occasional pop of color to identify important elements. Right now I'm adding contrast to my setting by coloring in the water and the shadows. These values help us to separate what we're seeing in each panel, but it also creates depth and spatial awareness. So just like in the movies, what I'm doing here in the first three shots is establishing the setting for the viewer. If you've seen the movie City of Angels, it's a 1998 film starring Meg Ryan and Nicolas Cage. They use the same formula in that movie as they move the camera around the city, capturing b-roll of the angel population in their natural environment going about their usual routines before it focuses in on the main cast of characters. It is an older movie and there are hundreds of more recent examples, but I like that one, so that's the example I chose. Anyway, the dragonfly, the fish, snail, and crab we see in the water are all like the unidentified angels going about their business in that movie. And it isn't until we focus in on the duck covering his face with his wing back here by the tree that we start to see our main cast of characters. Back to our list of five things a storyboard needs to tackle, we've talked a little bit about camera perspective already, and having some familiarity with constructing a film helps. If that's not something you have a lot of experience with already, try deconstructing scenes from some of your favorite films and use that to inform your own storyboards. What we haven't talked about is delivering dialogue, mostly because there isn't any dialogue in this storyboard. Dialogue is one of those elements that sounds simple. It's so easy to slip into shot-for-shot -shot talking heads by default, but there are so many better ways to capture a conversation visually. The first way to deviate from back and forth talking heads is to include some reaction shots of a character listening rather than showing the speaker speaking. Sometimes the response dialogue provokes has more impact on your audience when they see the impact it has on another cast member. Sometimes inserts of objects either being talked about or deliberately not mentioned or talked around can create impact as well. And you can also keep the conversation visually stimulating by changing the perspective. Maybe instead of headshots, frame both characters in a two shot or an over the shoulder shot looking at one character from another's perspective. Do an extreme close up on a character's eyes if it's an intense moment or pull back for a wide shot, a high angle or low angle shot, especially if you want to include the atmosphere where the conversation is taking place. Next is character representation. You will probably have a character sheet for your characters, whether you drew it yourself or someone else designed them. And here's mine for my frog. Keeping the character on model to the best of your ability is great, but it's just as, if not more important to capture characterization in your panels as if they were the keyframes in an animation. 
This is why I think emoting your character's feelings with their body language and facial expressions is extra beneficial to storyboarding. Pacing and rhythm ties together with characterization in the sense that if you treat your panels like keyframes, both the characterization and the pacing will have a strong foundation to work off of. It's not always a matter of equally measured seconds between panels so much as making sure you show the beats. If there's a pregnant pause, for example, where nothing changes, you still want to show that beat in your storyboard on both sides of the pause. I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about that. And last but not least, the final element, which was the first element on my list and for a reason, telling the story. The tone of the story changes depending on who tells it. Each director has a different voice and each actor brings unique qualities to a story. For example, if we compare MGM's 1989 classic Red Riding Hood to the version Leonardo DiCaprio produced in 2011 starring Amanda Seyfried, we'd see a musical version and a supernatural horror version of the same story. How you tell the story, the genre, and the tone will impact every part of storyboarding that we've already talked about, which pretty much makes this the most important point and I basically saved the best for last. So final recap, these are the five elements to keep in mind for every storyboard you create. How to tell the story, how to present the character's character, how to deliver the dialogue, how to set your pace or rhythm, and how you add camera perspective that supports the director's vision. If you liked this video, please remember to like this video by giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I am making art and animation content on my channel all the time. Here is the complete storyboard with all 18 panels. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the art advice and tips as well as seeing my storyboarding process in the background. If you have any questions about this content or suggestions for future content you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below and I will see you next time.